Yes, last one there. Yep, sweet. All right, so last guy, I'll try to keep it a little quick. My name is Kellen. Uh, I'm actually a student here at the University of Washington studying in communications. I'm the communications manager for UW EcoCar. Um, so what is EcoCar? Um, we're competing in a competition called EcoCar 3, which is part of an umbrella of advanced vehicle technology competitions. It's a program sponsored by the Department of Energy, uh, General Motors, who donated a Camaro for this competition, and managed by Argonne National Labs. We are one of 16 teams currently competing, and we're building off of our second place finish in year two. Um, overall, we had what was the best technical car in the presentation, but perhaps not the best presentation, so we're working to improve that for EcoCar 3. Uh, the challenge this year is to take a stock 2016 Chevrolet Camaro that you see on the left. We got the 12th one off the line before anyone else in the public got it. And we're supposed to turn it into a hybrid vehicle, something that will make a lot of people who own Camaros cringe. Um, it's also our job to make sure that this appeals to people in both consumer markets and hybrid car buyers. So there's a lot of technical obstacles for us to overcome here. Uh, to overcome these obstacles, we set a number of goals. Um, first and foremost, we want to maintain the performance of the car. We don't want Camaro drivers to feel like this is something foreign to them, that this is a completely different invention and that we've stripped the spirit of their favorite car. Um, because these people are muscle car drivers, because they want to drive fast, we also prioritize safety. And we do that through advanced driver assistance systems and also in other control systems within the car. Um, the UW team took second place in the innovation topic, which I will talk about later on. That was in last year's competition. Um, being a hybrid car, we prioritize energy efficiency over your traditional 2016 Camaro. And also we want to focus on consumer appeal, really blending the markets of maybe a Prius buyer and a Camaro buyer. It's a big bridge, bridge to build, but we are shortly closing that gap. Um, so this is the culmination of our first two years of work. This is our system modeling for the car. Uh, in green, you have cooling systems. In blue, you have high voltage. In yellow, we have our generator set that powers the gray battery in the back of the car. Um, in red is actually an in-house design fuel tank. We completely took out the transmission, so it sits there where the transmission of the Camaro was. And it runs on something called E85 fuel, which is 85% ethanol. Um, the light blue system that you see towards the back of the car on your right uh, controls the pink portion, the magenta portion, which is the rear, um, rear drivetrain, the motors that actually power the car. Um, so those are the systems that we've been modeling for the first two years of competition. We are in the fourth currently, so we've gone a lot further than that. We've actually managed to integrate these components. Um, instead of the, the traditional V6 engine that would be found in your 2016 Camaro, we use an 800cc Honda motorcycle engine. All this does is run in, or in, run in series with the, uh, with the other components in the car, so the drivetrain is entirely electric. This just powers the 16.8 or the 16 .8 kilowatt hour battery in the back of the car. Um, the genset serves as a 100-mile range extender, so overall we add 100 miles to the range. However, initially on EV mode, we can travel about 50 miles um, in city traffic. Obviously, if you're driving in a city, it's going to be better since our car also employs regenerative braking. Um, something that we've also done is a custom-designed gearbox. That is to get more torque out of our motors, um, not because you would need a gearbox, it's just to make the car faster and more appealing to those Camaro owners. Um, making it have the same performance as a Camaro, we did custom torque vectoring, something that may normally be comp accomplished by a differential, which we did not use. Um, and finally, we improved the driver assistance systems in the car. We've actually been working on a couple special ones that I'll get to later. Um, some component integration, you guys may want to know what this looks like a little bit. On the left, we have the Genset integration. That is the 800cc Honda motorcycle engine you see there. And on the right, we are, in this picture, connecting orange HV lines to the rear subframe. Here's both of them being integrated. Um, each of these processes took between six to 12 hours and teams of more than 13 people changing guard as the hours go. So this was quite the endeavor and we see here there's a couple students on our left working uh, to put in the gen set. This has all come together in the past two years mechanically. Um, overall, this is the 
bottom of our car, if you took a picture of it going from left to right, we have the battery, we have the individual motors with spin independently enabling our car to get more traction. We have inverters, converters, a fuel tank, and then we have the rear sub, or we have the, uh, the gen set in the front. Um, continuing, ooh. Getting to those driver assistance systems, uh, we have something which we call Adam that monitors the driver's awareness, the extent to which they're paying attention to the road versus other stimuli that a driver may be paying attention to. And we also have these systems right here. Um, this was all done by our advanced driver assistance team. So if you're a UW student, you might actually be interested in joining these people for the next eco car competition. Um, so if you want to get involved, you can obviously reach out to me. Uh, the car is here. We're at the UW, so it's actually going to be parked outside after these, this event. It's not white like it is in the pictures here. Uh, we just got it wrapped last week, so it is now a brand new festive gold and black for everyone to look at, um, which will be really fun. So you guys can go um, find me outside on Stevens Way, and we will have the car ready for everyone to see with all the components exposed. It'll be fun. We just ask that you don't publish pictures immediately beforehand. Uh, we kind of want to jump out in front of that first. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. What's the acceleration for your car uh, in the hybrid mode? Uh, the acceleration. So our car produces 4,200 newton meters of torque in an ideal situation. However, the acceleration that we've measured currently doesn't indicate that, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, the acceleration that we can achieve currently is around eight seconds. However, if we were to maximize the torque, we would be able to achieve it, um, or we'd be able to go much faster, probably something around five seconds. Uh, the reason we're not currently is because we need to change the half shafts if they were to put, if we were to put them under the amount of torque that our car could produce, we would risk essentially spaghettifying them, turning them and twisting, and then the metal will want to turn back. We would, we would get a pretty catastrophic failure. So we want to fix those in, to enable the car to run at full capacity. Any other questions? Can we take it for a test drive right now? <laughs> no test drives. You'll see it outside though, for sure. <laughs> What is the weight difference between the converted right. one to the um, original? So we added approximately 400 pounds. It's a little over two tons. The car weighs a little more. Um, the biggest difference, we didn't change the weight excessively. The biggest difference is in the weight distribution. Um, because you take out that giant V6 engine and replace it with an 800cc Honda motorcycle one, it's going to be a lot of weight taken from the front. Also, the giant battery pack in the back of the car adds a substantial amount of weight. So it's just a different weight distribution. It's not anything significant to the actual total weight of the car. Any other questions? Yeah, just a quick question. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you're incorporating with Tesla? I know a few years back they made public some of their battery stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be great if we were able to model our car off of a lot of Tesla's components. Unfortunately, what they do is kept safe by a very expensive frame and a very safe system that we simply couldn't afford. Um, we are working within the confines of a 2016 Camaro frame, so we can't do a lot of the things that Tesla does, like have a giant battery pack integrated through the whole car. Because if we were to crash, we don't have that nice frame to protect it, it would be catastrophic. So ours is in the back of the car, kept safe. All right, put your hands together for all the...